done. So it looks like it's finally working. Yay. Sometimes um, I have to re-log into my account to get my Facebook to work, but it looks like everything is working fantabulously. So, uh, tansi everyone. Oki, bonzu, hello. Welcome to another fabulous Tuesday teaching. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that this Thursday is uh, May 5th which is uh, not only Cinco de Mayo, but it's also red dress day. Um, so I'm wearing my fabulous red dress earrings. I'm wearing my red skirt. Uh, and I'm gonna stand up and sing for a minute. You'll, you'll see it in a minute. But um, it's also just that reminder to really honor those families that have murdered or missing um, you know, family members, people that, you know, are they were in our hearts, they're on our mind, we're striving for justice, we're striving for answers. And I think this is why it's so important to continue to have events like this so that we can, excuse me, talk about these issues, um, but also so that we can show the families that they are supported and they are taken care of. I think that's the most important thing of any of these events. Um, also, uh, on, well, this Thursday, the event will be starting at noon. Um, if anybody has been along Memorial Drive in Calgary, you know that there are those crosses that um, are really highlighted during um, uh, Remembrance Day. And so that is where we will be doing the celebration because it is just very fitting to have a memorial and a remembrance of um, our family members that have been gone um, and who have been taken from us. So in that space, so that's where we will be starting. Uh, and so I will be there very briefly <laughs> over the lunch hour because I am at a school that day. Um, but I'm very, very thankful and humbled that the school that I'm at understands um, fully and completely and completely supports um, the initiative. Of course, it's Mitsutati, so of course they do. And so, um, yeah, welcome everyone. I just wanted to start by acknowledging the land upon which we stand. Again, because if you don't know where you are, you don't know where you're going and you're going to get lost. Um, but also it's important to create a sense of place, to create a sense of connection to the land, to create a sense of understanding um, and really a deep respect and a profound relationship with not only the land itself, but with the people who have been here for thousands upon thousands of generations. I am uh, Cree, Anishinaabe, and Métis. I'm from Muscogee Cree Nation, which is in Treaty 6 territory. But I have been living and working and breathing and, um, you know, building relationships and community in Treaty 7 for, you know, over 20 years. And I'm so, so thankful to be here. Um, and I feel like I've left and then I've come home and I've left and I've come home. And I always feel whenever I arrive back in Calgary that I'm coming home. And so it's just a gift to be here on this land. And so to welcome everyone into the circle, I wanted to acknowledge the Blackfoot of Siksika, Gaina, and Pagani. The Sarsi Dene, also known as the Beaver People, from Tsutsuna, and the Stony Nakoda from Morley, which includes Chiniki, Bearspa, and West Beavers Nations. And I also want to acknowledge the Métis of Region 3, which is why I proudly wear my Métis sash to act as that bridge between Indigenous and non-Indigenous culture. Um, I wanted to begin by sharing the Cree welcome song. Uh, traditionally, when we sing songs, we sing in rounds of four to honor the four directions of the medicine wheel. But this, we sing in rounds of three to keep the circle open and welcoming so everyone completes the circle today. Because in a circle, we're all connected. There's no beginning, there's no end, no one is greater or less than anyone else in the circle, just like in the hoop of life. So it teaches us to honor each other for those differences. Because if we were all exactly the same, the world would be incredibly boring and nothing would ever get done. So we need those differences to be able to keep our circle strong, to be able to keep our community thriving. And yes, it really honors that. Uh, I honor the Matthau family from Sturgeon Lake for keeping this song and the story behind the song alive. And many families like the Matthau family for maintaining these teachings, these traditions, these songs, and our languages. In spite of insurmountable odds, we are still here, we are still strong, and we are still sharing in the true spirit and intention of connection and relationship building. And so that's what this song means. Miasin, um, it doesn't just mean welcome, it also means beautiful. I'm gonna stand up to sing. Miasin, Miasin, Hasemin, Hold 
Tuskino Mi Asin Mi Asin Hasemina Hasemina E Peta Kote circle tonight everyone. Uh, so tonight I think it's uh, really important to be able to start with a smudge um, just to you know start in a good way uh, to start grounded to start connected um, and so I'm going to explain a little bit about my medicines before I dig into the smudge and so I want to start in the east and again these are just my teachings and so if they make sense to you awesome if they don't that's okay too um, because this is why we have oral traditions and oral storytelling. If it's meant for us we'll remember it if it's not you know, to take up space in our brain um, because every nation has different teachings every nation has a different connection to the medicine and the medicine wheel is going to look different depending on where you're from and even the way it's explained the directions might uh, differ depending on where you're from and so I can only share what I know and have the hiccups all right and so I'm gonna start in the east and in the east we have sweet grass Sweetgrass honors our mind, it honors connections, um, it helps us to make good decisions. This is why it has seven blades of sweetgrass in every section to represent the seven teachings, to represent our seven generations behind and our seven generations forward. So when we hold sweetgrass with us, even if we're not burning it, we have our ancestors with us, we have our future generations with us, and we have those seven teachings with us. And this is considered the men's medicine, so when a woman is on her moon time, we usually won't touch other people's feet grass because um, it's like, well, it's a fire medicine. So it would be like pouring water onto a fire. It would kind of dampen it. And so um, out of respect for that medicine, we'll just take a step back. Unless it's our own personal braid of sweet grass, then it's used to our energy, so it's fine. Um, and so this is sweet grass, our connection to the east our connection to the mind, and even if I'm not using the medicines, I always lay them out to respect and honor them as we smudge. Um, in the south, I have cedar. And so, uh, <laughs> it's funny, every time I say something out loud, it just happens. So I was like, oh, I really need cedar. And, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, not, oh, well, I showed up to a friend who was like, oh, I need some sage. I was like, sure, I've got like lots of extra sage, surprisingly. Um, and so I gave her sage, and as I was walking up, there was um, a whole down cedar from her neighbors in their yard. And so we went over and we harvested cedar just to honor that plant. Uh, and then I brought more sage over to a friend who just happened to have cedar from harvesting last year. So as soon as I put it out to the universe, tons of it came to me. So cedar is that connection to the earth. It, the cedar, um, it's a connection to our physical bodies, to um, our the relationship that we need to build with our bodies, with our physical earth. It's our adolescence. Um, and that's the time where we grow and we change physically the most, but also we maintain a deeper understanding to the relationship that we need to build with ourselves. And the plants teach us that. And cedar, an amazing plant. It is jam-packed with vitamins, minerals, antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral. It's awesome. I actually should probably have some cedar tea. It's allergy season. And right now it is jam-packed with a ton of um, antihistamines. And so it's like uh, you know, liquid claritin. It's fantastic. So it's also really nice. So when I have, when I drink a lot, my teeth look great. Uh, and so that is cedar. In the west, we have sage. I'm doing a lot of sage, which is awesome. This is what I'll be smudging with today. Sage is the women's medicine. Um, I'm very thankful for the extra sage that I was gifted. It was funny. I was gifted a bunch of sage, and then all of a sudden, 
I found that big bag of sage that I had gotten a long time ago <laughs> and I was able to gift to other people as well. So that was wonderful. Um, I love it how things just line up like that. It's fantastic. Um, but sage is the women's medicine. It teaches us to honor Grandmother Moon, which is connection to water. Um, it's our connection to our emotions. Uh, and it helps us to really replenish ourselves and, you know, honor that connection that we have, not only to Grandmother Moon, but to the teachings of, you know, um, self-care, <laughs> which is such an important teaching, but also uh, honoring community, honoring that connection to community, realizing that you can't do everything by yourself, um, and that everyone has a place, everyone has uh, a time and a connection. But... Um, just like when we make a Cree style drum, it's a big circle and every notch represents a person uh, in that circle that's supporting the circle and one, one piece on its own would snap if it was supporting the entire circle. So we have to remember that teaching. And so, mm, that smells so amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. <laughs> so that is Sage, uh, the women's medicine that in the smudge bowl. And then the last medicine that we have is tobacco. Uh, tobacco, again, is that spirit medicine. So it's more of a symbolic medicine. We don't actually take it into our physical bodies like the other medicines that we have. Um, it teaches us to really honor and be unseen, to, um, you know, we gift it to each other to say thank you from our spirit to someone else's spirit. We gift it to an elder so they could tap into something higher than us. We gift it to people to thank them for sharing their teachings and for, you know, their ancestors bringing them here and to thank their ancestors as well. And we gift it to plants to um, thank them for giving themselves to us, to thank Mother Earth. We also do it because it helps them to grow. Huzzah! So, yes, I love tobacco. And so... Even though, again, I'm not using all of the medicines, I'm only using sage today, uh, we always lay all of them out to give honor and thanks to them. So I'm just taking out my earrings because metal holds energy, and I will put them on afterwards. But uh, smudging is just letting go of things that you don't need and asking for the things that you do need. There we go. Right. I'm going to ask to finish my ribbon skirt because I have another ribbon skirt that I'm in the process of making for Thursday. Fingers crossed that I actually have the time to do so. When we smudge, there's no right or wrong way to smudge. It's whatever feels good to us. Asking for the things that you need, letting go of the things that you don't. Praying, setting intention, whatever you want to call it. Standing with my hand, my feather, I have no idea where my feather went. I'm pretty sure my cat took it, so I'm sure I'll find it again eventually. Right. So I found it with my hand, never blow on it because your breath is your life and your life is precious. Just like we never put a lighter onto it because we're not entitled to the things that are in the lighter, so it disrespects the relationship that we have with Mother Earth when we wear that, when we put it directly on there. And so the first thing I like to do is cleaning my hands so that I let, um, let go of anything that I'm carrying. <laughs> I bring it over my body four times to honor the four directions in my body. I smudge my mind so I can think clearly and learn from every person that crosses my path so I can remember to be open-minded and never rigid with my thinking. I smudge my ears so I can see clearly or sorry, so I can hear <laughs> clearly to honor my ears and all that I hear. So I can listen twice as much as I speak. So I remember to be open to the messages that my ears are giving. I smudge my eyes. I'm very thankful for my vision this lifetime. So I can see good things, see the beauty in all things and all people. But also to remember to see the unseen. I smudge my nose so I smell danger and nature and dinner because I'm starting to smell it now. <laughs> I smudge my mouth so I speak only true and kind words that are helpful and in line with the seven teachings. I always ask myself, is it truthful? Is it helpful? Is it kind? Is it, is it respectful? If it's none of those things, I shouldn't say it or do it. I smudge my throat. I'm very thankful for my voice this lifetime, so I will continue to give voice to the voiceless. 
and then gifted the beautiful name she who sings and uh, dances with spirits in the storm by Mary Musham. Then we had a great grandfather, uh, Joseph Grey Eyes, and also I've been gifted a black book name. I don't know how to say it. I'm working on actually being able to say both of them. Uh, Red Singer, because there is not a word for pink in black book. And that was from Clarence Volplay. <laughs> he always makes me smile. So I thank that the voice that I, I've been given so I can share it in a good way. I smudged my lungs to honor the sacred breath that we all share, and so I can breathe good, clean air and honor the sacred breath that we share with all of the plants. I smudged my heart so I remember to be kind and compassionate and show unconditional love to all those that cross my path. To my family, friends, and all my relations around the world my stomach so all of the food that I eat this day will nourish my body. I smudge my belly button to honor my spirit. That's where we're connected with what we come into this world. So that's where our spirit speaks through us and to us. I smudge my womanhood because I'm very thankful to be a woman and a mother in this time. And to also be a two-spirit woman to carry those teachings forward, both that masculine and feminine energy in balance and in synergy. I smudge my shoulders and my back so I carry all of the responsibility that Creator has gifted me with grace and humility. I smudge my arms and my hands so I can do the good work that Creator's put me here to do. I smudge my legs so I walk this red road in a good way. And I smudge my feet oops, so I stay grounded and connected to Mother Earth treading lightly upon her and honoring her with every step. And if there's anywhere else in your body that you need a little extra love, so my back is a little sore today, so smudge there. My hips, they're still healing, and the last couple days have been a challenge, just because the weather's changed so drastically, and my body is like a human barometer. So honor my hips. And then, if there's anyone in your life that you want to send that healing to, that love and that appreciation, you send them that way. And when you're all done, you just say hi hi, or miigwetch, or merci, or grazie, or shi shi, or donke shi, or however you say thank you in your language. Because your language is important, it's part of you. And so now, now that I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and put my earrings back on. Oops. And they're a little tricky. They have a little curve on the end, so they make it really hard to put it back into my ear bowl. Um, and I am wearing these lovely little red dresses that I picked up to honor um, our MMIWGUTS. Very, very lovely. Because it's really important that we honor the memory of all of those we have lost and honor the efforts of those that have never stopped striving for justice. And so, on that note, um, I'm going to share a couple of songs tonight. Of course, women's songs that uh, hopefully you'll be hearing at the um, event on the 5th. Uh, so definitely the Strong Woman song we'll be hearing, uh, the Women's Warrior song we will be hearing. Um, and I would also like to share a couple of songs as well. So before we get to those, I'm going to share Anagea, which is the Women's Honor song. Um, which is from Joan Henry, who is Arapaho Cherokee. And this song teaches us to really um, honor that, uh, that sacredness of the woman, that pulse of Mother Earth, that pulse of nature, that pulse of the moon, um, that connection that we have to our own rhythms and our own pulses uh, as caregivers, as nurturers, as people who carry feminine energy. All of us carry feminine energy. So it's really recognizing that divine feminine, if we want to call it that, within each and every one of us, both male, female, two-spirit, we all carry that energy. And so it's um, it's a gift to be able to carry it forward. And uh, yeah, this is Anagea, the Women's Honor Song. Joan Henry can be found on YouTube. She has a bunch of other songs. She's absolutely incredible. I believe, well, she's uh, Arapaho and Cherokee, so I think she might be from... Well, I know she was living in California for a while, but I'm not exactly sure. I'll have to look her up again because it's been a while. So, grab the drum. And so this is Anagea, the Women's Honor Song. Oh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. We are a balance of both that divine femininity and divine masculinity. Definitely. I'm going to honor that balance. share a story and a song for a special someone and so uh this story and the song that i'm going to share today is the raven story and the raven song so i'm gonna suit up and sit up and come close for the raven story and so um a long time ago before we were created as the two leggeds uh all of the animals had to learn different things that they were going to teach us that they were going to share with us and some of the animals looked a little different some of them were bigger some of them were smaller um but they were all finding their purpose because once those animals found their purpose they were able to share it with us once all of the bugs found their purpose they could share it with us um and so all of the creatures uh you know everyone had different things to learn and most of them started figuring it out quite quickly um but one of them in particular was having a little hard time well not really a hard time they uh, looked very different indeed, and that it was the raven. The raven had these beautiful rainbow feathers, and no matter which way you looked at him, he looked like a different shade or a different color of rainbow. He was very iridescent. And so, because of this, he started catching sight of himself in different bodies of water. So he'd catch sight of himself in a pond and go, oh, I am so beautiful. And then he'd catch sight of himself in a river and say, oh, I am so gorgeous. And then he continued and he would catch sight of himself in a pond and go, I am magnificent. And then he kept going and then he caught himself in another puddle and said, I am so fabulous. And then he saw himself in a lake fully and completely. He pulled out his uh, feathers and 
I am so fabulous and gorgeous and beautiful and wonderful. I must be the best animal ever. And so he started strutting around telling all the animals, all of the critters, everything that he was the best. He said, hey friends, have you seen my feathers? I am the most beautiful, fabulous, gorgeous, magnificent creature in the world. I am obviously the best animal ever. And all of the animals were like, well, no, Raven, like we all have different things that we get to learn. We all have different purposes. We all have different things that we're really great at, different things that we get to teach the two leggeds things that we do to make the world a better place that makes the world thrive. We all have different things that we're incredible at. So, well, you can't be the best because we're all the best at what we do. And Raven said, well, obviously, I am the best because have you seen these feathers? And I can fly and I'm incredibly clever. Obviously, I'm the best. And all of the animals and the critters thought, well, what if the raven was right? What, what if the raven was the best? And so they stopped doing what made them amazing. The pollinators stopped pollinating, the plants started dying, the cleaners stopped cleaning, and there was a hot mess everywhere. Even the beavers stopped cutting down the trees and her teeth kept growing and growing and growing and it was out of hand. And so eventually when the bear woke up, she looked around and she was like, whoa, 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 wait a sec, what is happening here? Why is the whole world falling apart? I better go investigate this and find out what happened. I'm going to go talk to the beaver because the beaver is the smartest animal anyone knew. She was very inventive and could build incredible dams. And so the bear went to the beaver and said, beaver, what is happening here? None of the plants are growing. Everybody's looking really bored and nobody's doing what makes them amazing. And then the beaver turned around and the bear said, whoa, beaver, what happened to your teeth? And the beaver said, well, bear, I kind of stopped cutting down trees and my teeth just kept growing and growing and growing. And now they're just out of hand. And the bear said, well, beaver, why did you stop cutting down trees? You love to cut down trees. And the beaver said, yeah. I do love to cut down trees, but the raven said that he was the best, and because the raven said that he was the best, everybody stopped doing what made them amazing, and the beaver looked around, and she realized the whole world was falling apart. She said, oh no, bear, what are we going to do? And the bear said, well, beaver, you should get back to doing what makes you amazing. I mean, not only do you look incredibly bored, but your teeth. They definitely got out of hand. And if you look downstream, when you build your dams and redirect the river, you not only help special medicines to grow, but you are able to stop the water just enough so those little animals who don't get to drink fresh water have a place to drink. Beaver, you're super important and very special. And the beaver said, you're right there. I'm gonna get back to doing what makes me amazing. And she did. But she said, Bear, you're going to have to talk to the raven because he's making everybody feel bad. And the bear said, of course I will. And so the bear continued on her journey to find the raven. And all along her path, she talked to all of the animals, all of the bugs, all of the plants, everything uh, to make sure that they felt special. And they knew how unique and important they each and every one of them were. And by the time he got, uh, she got back to the raven, she said, Raven, what are you doing? And the raven, who was looking at himself in the ocean, was like, I'm just basking in my glory. Have you seen my feathers? I'm the most incredible, beautiful, fabulous, gorgeous creature in the world. I'm obviously the best. And the bear said, well, no, everyone has a purpose. Everyone has something they're good at. Everybody has something they're very special and, and can teach the two-leggeds when they arrive. But Raven, you're not the best. In fact, you're making everybody feel bad, which isn't nice at all. And the raven said, well, it's not my fault that I'm the best. And the bear said, uh, no, you're not. And the raven said, uh, yes, I am. And the bear said, uh, no, you're not. And the raven said, yes, I am. And the bear said, no, you're not. And the raven said, yes, I am. And the bear said, no, you're not. The raven said, yes, I am. And the bear said, no, you're not. And the raven said, yes, I am. And the bear said, no, you're not. And the raven said, yes, I am. And finally the bear got frustrated and said, okay, fine. 
if you're the best, you have to prove it. And the raven said, Psh, yeah, of course I could prove it because I am the best. And the bear said, well, only the best animal could catch the sun. And the raven said, Psh, yeah, of course I could catch the sun because I could fly. Of course, I'll go prove that I am the best animal ever. And without thinking it through, the raven started to fly higher and higher and higher towards the sun. And he got warmer and warmer and ooh, it was getting really warm close to the sun, but he was determined to prove that he was the best. So he flew higher and higher and his feathers started smoking a little bit, but that was okay. It wasn't gonna deter him from proving that he was the best. So he flew higher and higher and higher. And he said, I am the best until his feathers burst into flames and he said, oh, 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 fire! And he tried to put out the flames by tamping them down. Oh, and he lost control. Oh, and he crashed into the ocean. And as he swam to the shore and pulled himself down, he looked down at his feathers. They weren't rainbow anymore. They were completely burned totally singed. He was mad. How could the bear play such a mean trick on him? So he started marching angrily over to the bear. Well, he's a bird. So he started hopping angrily over to the bear. And along his path, he passed all of the animals and the bugs and the plants and all of the creatures that he had made feel bad. And he stopped and he watched as they did what made them amazing. He watched that the pollinators went from plant to plant to plant, helping them grow. And he thought, huh, that is absolutely amazing. I could never do that. Wow, that is so special. And then he looked down at his own feathers. And he didn't feel special anymore. And he thought about how horrible it would have felt for his friends to feel like they weren't special. And he apologized. He said, friends, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I made everybody feel awful. I see now that you are all incredible in your own way. I'm sorry. I apologize. And he continued on his journey. And as he did, he saw more animals who were fulfilling their purpose. And he was amazed and he apologized. He almost stepped on an ant and he watched as the ants cleaned up incredible amounts of debris and he was like amazed by it. Wow, look at how you can carry so many more times your own weight and you're cleaning up the mess of the earth. That's such a beautiful thing to do. And you're gonna teach the two leggeds how to work together. Cooperation is so important. That is such a special gift. Oh, friends, I'm sorry for saying you weren't special. I see now you're absolutely amazing. And so he apologized. He continued, he heard a cow cow sound and as he turned around he saw the beaver chopping down a big tree he said wow beaver your teeth are magnificent the tree fell and she continued to drag it into the river he thought huh i didn't realize how strong you were beaver and then he watched as she made her dam he thought huh that's really interesting how you would build that i didn't know you did that either beaver and then he watched as the water backed up and up and up and all of those little teeny tiny animals had a place to drink. And he thought, wow, beaver, that is so incredibly kind. I'm sorry for saying you weren't special. I can see now you're incredibly special and important for all of these animals and for these medicines and for so much. I'm sorry, beaver, for making you feel like you were less than amazing. I see now you're incredible. So by the time the raven got back to the bear, he had finished apologizing to all of the animals that he had made feel bad. And he said, bear, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry that I made everybody feel bad. But bear, look at me, I'm not special anymore. And the bear said, no raven, you're really special. And the raven said, I am? And the bear said, yes, you learned a really valuable lesson. And the raven said, I did. And the bear said, yes, 
you learned about humility. And the, bear, and the raven said, humility? That's a weird word. What does that even mean? And the bear said, well, humility is knowing that you're not greater or less than anyone else. It's recognizing that everyone else has gifts and talents and different things to share with the world, and also really appreciating those differences in other people. But also, Raven, humility is the ability not to take yourself too seriously. Because if you weren't taking yourself so seriously, Raven, you wouldn't have flown into the sun. You knew better. And the raven said, you're right, bear. Actually, that was a pretty good trick to teach me about humility. It... Trick. Hey, bear, do you think I could play tricks on people and tricks on all of our friends to teach them about humility? And the bear said, well, I suppose so. I suppose you could. And the raven smiled, and for the first time, he got his voice. He started to laugh. Ah, 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 ah. You're right, Bear. I'm going to teach all of the animals about humility by playing tricks on them. And from that point on, in many of our stories, the raven became the trickster. But still to this day, if you look at a raven's feather, it has a little shimmer, a rainbow, to remind him to stay humble. And that is the Raven story. <laughs> and now I'm going to share with you the Raven song because it's super fun. And so there's three parts of the song, a part that we sing all together, a uh, part where we let out our happy sound, and then a part where <laughs> we do a call and response. So I'm going to sing it all the way through. Uh, and at the end of the third round, you'll hear Ooh, as the Raven falls out of the sky. And then we'll go up a little higher with that fourth round because he's learned his lesson. And so this is the Raven song. Uh, the Raven song I was gifted from my um, cousin Damien, uh, who is Cherokee, as he calls it. Uh, I heard it online. I was like, oh my god, this song, I feel like I know it. And I finally tracked down the person who was sharing it. And he said, oh yeah, well, this is kind of a uh, Cree song, kind of a Cherokee song. And then he asked me where I was from. And I said, well, Muskeg Lake is my family. He's like, What's your last name? And I'm like, well, my family name is Gray Eyes. He's like, hey, cuz. <laughs> it's just so weird how the world is so, so small. And so he said, yeah, this is one of our family songs. So of course you can share it. And just uh, honor me every time you do. So I honor my cousin Damien every time I do. And so this is the Raven song.
Um, now we're going to sing um, a couple women's songs. The Strong Woman Song. Mm. And um, just honor the teachings behind the song. This is... Um, <clears throat> this was originally known as the Turtle Song. And when we look at the turtle, I mean, our beautiful Mother Earth is Turtle Island. And so it's really about growth. It's about reflection. It's about um, supporting and nurturing each other, giving us the building blocks and the foundation of life. Um, it's also really about honoring the phases of the moon. Because when we look at the turtle, it has 28 ridges along the outside to represent the 28 days in a moon cycle. It has the 13 bumps to represent the 13 moons in a year. And the moons were used as a guide to, you know, plant and to harvest and to hunt uh, and to know what uh, plants to that were coming of age, but also to know when our ceremonies were going to happen. We would have moon ceremonies, um, full moon ceremonies for women uh, and new moon ceremonies for men. Um, and it was such a gift to be able to honor them in that way. And so, uh, yeah, I'm just really thankful for this song um, and for the teachings behind it. But also this song was um, an incredible healing tool that was brought into a prison in Ontario. Um, so there was a lot of Anishinaabe and OD3 women in this, um, in this prison. And when women go to prison, sometimes it's because they're escaping abusive relationships. Sometimes it's intergenerational trauma that has really been plaguing them and their families for many, many um, years, seasons, generations. Uh, sometimes it is because they just don't feel like they have any other options. Uh, you've lost really hope and you lose everything else as well. And so this song was brought forth as well as a recipitism program to be able to heal and reconnect these women to who they were uh, as, you know, strong Indigenous women, as uh, people who deserve love and deserve healing. And I'm so very, very thankful um, that it has become synonymous with a strong women's song. For all of the women who are involved with that program, this really became a theme song, and they continued to share it for um, many, many years, and it really became the uh, backbone of um, a lot of the marches for murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls out east, and now it's really spread its way uh, to the west coast. So first I'll be showing the, uh, sharing the east coast song, and then last I will be sharing the west coast song. And so this is the strong woman song, also known as the turtle song. Uh, when I do it, I do it with a heartbeat, because the heartbeat is a women's beat, it's an honor beat, it's a healing beat, um, and it's a community beat, because we need to come together as a community to heal. Um, and uh, we also, when I sing it, I um, do a little bit of a key change, if you want to call it that, but I feel like every time we do it, it's like rising above. As we come together as women, we can rise above any situation, any challenge, and we can come together to heal, to lift our future generations out of everything that we've had to experience. We even look back, you know, two generations. Um, my cousin's generation went through so much more than I have had to do. And it's because of her generation and all the work that they have put in and all the hardships that they had gone through that I'm able to share in a good way and reclaim my culture and my teachings and slowly reclaim my language. And so um, I see our ancestors, our grandmothers before us um, and our grandfathers before us as those strong humans who have really laid that foundation and um, they had to go through the hardships so that we could really um, bring back our teachings in a good way. So this is the Strong Women song. I honor um, my friend Stephanie, I honor uh, my friend Sandra, and I honor my Fakram because she's been in my heart, in my mind, in my thoughts, in my prayers. So this is the Strong Women song.
for the little motion. Um, the next song that I'd like to share with you, this is a uh, West Coast song. This is a Salish song. It's called the Women's Warrior Song. And, um, oh, thanks, Jamie. Um, this was really brought forth um, during uh, the American Indian Movement, during the Oka Crisis, um, to really honor the grandmothers that were keeping the home fires burning. Uh, they were the ones holding ceremony, they were the ones taking care of the kids, they were the ones making sure that everybody on the front lines um, who were, you know, protesting and really um, honoring our brothers out east and the work that was happening there. Um, they were the ones making sure that everybody was taken care of. Uh, and then the RCMP got this really bright idea, not so bright idea, is, well, if we arrest the grandmothers, then there's going to be nobody to watch the kids, there's going to be nobody to feed the people on the front lines, um, and so the protests will stop. <laughs> or will they? And so they arrested like 30 grandmothers, threw them in jail, and they're like, okay, there's, that's the end of that, they're going to stop protesting now. But then the protesters doubled in size because most of them brought their kids with them. And so there was not only children on the front line, but other people joined the uh, protest as well. People from allied communities because they realized, wait a second, no, something is definitely wrong here. And so um, all of them were honoring those grandmothers by sharing this song, which came out of the sweat lodge. Uh, and then when those grandmothers were finally released from prison, because you could only hold someone in prison for 30 days without, uh, without charge, and so they had to release them. When those grandmothers got out, they sang this song really loudly on the steps of uh, the courthouse when they came out to honor the warrior spirit. Um, within each and every one of us. And so this now has become synonymous with the murder of missing Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit people uh, in um, Vancouver, specifically along East Hastings, because we have lost a lot of people there, but also to honour those that we have lost along the Highway of Tears um, and throughout a lot of BC, but also across all of Turtle Island. And so um, when we share this song, it's really to honour that warrior spirit in each and every one of us. And a warrior is a nurturer, and a warrior is someone who conquers their demons, whether that be uh, addiction or breaking the cycle of generational trauma. A warrior is someone who steps into those roles who aren't necessarily their roles, but to honor and maintain community and their families. Um, a warrior is somebody who stand up, stands up for what's right um, and doesn't back down. That is a true warrior. It doesn't have to be somebody who's fighting on the front lines, but it's someone who just makes a difference, um, whether it be in the life of one person or whether it be in the life of a thousand people. Those are warriors. And so, yeah, this is the Women's Warrior Song.
Uh, one is a Thunderbird song, because I think I'm like trying to call for more moisture. Um, we need, we need the moisture, we need the rain. I'll even take it in the version of snow, I don't care, just as long as my car doesn't get stuck driving up a hill anymore. Um, but we need that moisture for our medicines, we need that moisture for the fields. The farmers are seeding right now, and the price of food is going to go up and up and up, and that's just going to create more of a divide between the haves and the have-nots. And we need to really address that, pray to Mother Earth, because she always provides balance, um, as long as we are willing to listen to her wisdom. And so, this Thunderbird... Um, so it's that everything happens for a reason, but it also is that reminder we're going to get kicked in the butt if we're not on the right path. Uh, also, um, yeah, it teaches us that, you know, if we don't learn from our mistakes, we're going to keep repeating them over and over and over and over again until finally the Thunderbird just gets frustrated with giving us gentle lessons and just kicks us in the butt, uh, which is exactly what happened to me. <laughs> and so uh, I honor the Thunderbird. Uh, I honor the winds and the waters that it brings. I honor... Um, the teachings that it brings as well, and um, whether the lessons be hard or whether they be gentle, the good lessons um, that shapes and molds and gives us the strength that we have. So this is the Thunderbird song. around for the star people because they uh, really been present on my mind it's almost stargazing season so that's probably why and so the last song that I'd like to share just to wish everybody a good week ahead hopefully I will see you on Thursday um, I will only be there over the lunch hour so I do apologize if I miss anyone but uh, please do stay it's going to be an incredible event very powerful amazing speakers uh, phenomenal music uh, and just incredible stories we need to support our community more and more and more and um, if you're not sure, just come. Just come and be present and bear witness. It's so important. And so um, this song is a traveling song. So may all of your roads lead to good places. Um, may um, you, know, you create family and community everywhere your road does lead. It teaches us to really honor their journey and all that they've learned along our path. It's not about the destination, but about all of the steps that we've taken to get there. And so this is a traveling song. Um, it was... Originally, I learned it from my elder Sharon Food Turner, um, and then I thought that I'd lost it when I had lost her, but then it came back uh, through Ashley and Melinda, so I thank them for bringing it home. Uh, and so this is the traveling song. Thank you much, everyone. I hope you have a beautiful evening. Hi, hi, and I will see you next week.
Witch. I hope to see you on Thursday again along Memorial Drive if you're here in Mulkinstitz in Calgary, uh, where the crosses are. So I think that's like 13th? I don't know. Don't quote me. It's before the Center Street Bridge. Um, and so it's, uh, or well, if you're coming from the west, it's before the Center Street Bridge. If you're coming from the um, east, it's after the Center Street Bridge. You'll find it. You'll see us. Um, and I just wanted to give a big shout out to Deb for coordinating the event, um, for uh, my sister from another mother, I love Deb, um, for uh, Pearl and also for Noreen for the work that they have done. And um, thank you for everyone for the support in your community. Thank you, Rusty. And uh, I hope to see you all next week. Magwitch, hi hi, Danche, uh, and um, gra I was going to say gracias, gracias. Uh, but also um, Marcy. I really appreciate it. So we will see you next week. Bye, hi.